Your <laughs> nomenclature is on the precipice of amazing, Nick. <laughs> What do you think, Dave Moore? I, I I was in it. I was literally the whole <laughs> intro. I was just like feeling the vibes. It's like nasty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're our first professional musician to hear the Beatitudes intro. Mm, mm. I love it. What I, do you think? I mean, it, it, it's fitting. It's it's definitely rocking. It, it's it's perfect timing. It's got a good hook, brother. And when you're doing the next like national youth con- congress, whatever you're doing, I mean, yeah. you've got everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna mix them all together. DCYC, right? NCYC. Do you think you uh, could do one of these? Stuby YC. <laughs> just, just toss, yeah, yeah was, toss one of those. Solid. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Beatitudes. I'm Jeff Shuffleby, and I'm joined by co-host Nick Besner, Paul Kolker, and our guest today is Dave Moore from The Dave Moore Band, among many things, <laughs> including the Catholic Music Initiative and some other really cool things we're going to tell you about as we get into the show. Dave, we're so pumped to have you here. You made it to the studio for the first time ever. Um, you had your hand in this. I think you told us to buy these mics. This setup, yes. So thank you. What do you got? Oh my goodness, yeah, oh, what is happening? Come on, come on, come on. Merry Christmas. I only Hold brought on. two. That's, oh. Well, well, then we'll fight over pa- the Paul last and I one. will share. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> share. Y'all, just, y'all share. just put it on together. Dave right? Moore music. Right, this is my Calcutta. Oh. I've got one in the car for you. People okay, over thanks. paper, principle over form, mission over politics. The bride of Christ should always supersede artistic ambition. Wow. It's like you have 10 slogans. It's the beard for me. core values. Just, uh, you know, circling around the beard. I'm going to set it over (laughs) here in my important pile. The the flies of value. I love it. it. You're good? I'm good. You dig it? I'm just, I'm in awe. It's like the ointment of virtue is attracting the the flies of of core value. Mm. Yeah, that's that's in the Psalms. Yeah. (laughs) That's in there. There's a lot of flies in the Psalms. (laughs) <laughs> hey, uh, so this is a show for men. It's all about authentic fraternity. Mm. Do you feel like you have authentic male relationships in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell everybody what you do. Who are you? I think I just did in a, sh- a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm first a husband, father, um, got a three-year-old at home. Um, I recently uh, started a nonprofit called the Catholic Music Initiative, kind of manage a a really awesome team of people who make sure that they harness the wild tornado, which is my creative thoughts, and um, (laughs) including Jeff, president of the board. Um, uh, Yeah, I've been writing music for a long time, and um, I basically just want to pray with people, drink good coffee, and... uh, yeah, see a culture that puts Christ at the center of their life. And I think that music plays a really good big part in that because I believe that God speaks to his people through beauty and art. Beauty and art is the dialect of God. So, yeah, I kind of just doubled down on that. I do it both from the praise and worship side of things, just like prayer um, concerts, things like that, um, nights of adoration, which is not a concert. Um I concert things kind of a new thing recently, yeah. actually. Oh. Yeah, that's really new. I don't, I'm not really a concert guy, but anyways. Uh, and then the biggest thing is the mass, like engagement um, for people in the pews. In of the course. Mass. Well, that's and, the main one. And you've yeah. kind of done that for all of Dallas. Mm. I mean, with the, the live broadcast, trying. right? Trying. Yeah. Oh yeah. So here in Dallas, when COVID started, they started doing broadcast mass on, on the big TV stations, not just internet, which Internet yeah. mass is great, right. but it started to reach people that aren't going on and watching something on YouTube. Yeah. You know, the bishop got this broadcast out. Now, everywhere I go with you and your wife, I'm like the handler. Like, <laughs> here, let me hold your stuff while they take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> hold my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you from the TV. <laughs> He's always like, Jeff, fluff my beard. Here they come. <laughs> I actually brought this new... Uh, yeah, thank you, the straightener. Uh, it actually makes the beard look better. Because believe it or not, there have been a lot of people who have commented that my beard is unwieldy. Oh, I think Ooh, it's yeah. like a upside down Don wieldy. King. I think it's very wieldy. It's wieldy. Thank you. Thank you. I think <laughs> it can be that. tamed. 
But yeah, I've gotten handwritten letters telling me that I should shave the thing. <laughs> People have offered money. Notes and, of protest. Yeah, exactly. And so I on stationery. That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They must it, not know branding. <laughs> was it at least cardstock that they were sending you? Uh, like letterhead. One was like a folded up uh, old. Uh, what, what's the old school paper with legal pad? Is it where legal you have? Pad. Oh, I thought Thank you were gonna you. say it's where you have to pick My like man. blue five. Shave your beard. <laughs> Wow, that was an elaborate way to tell me. Your nomenclature is on the precipice of amazing, Nick. (laughs) (laughs) Not my words. He's multi-generational. Yeah, it's SAT words. Generational. When did you know when... When did you know music was your thing? There were were three major moments in life. Um, The first one was, uh, as a freshman in high school, my whole life uh, revolved around the game of basketball. I studied. I loved... Played summer league on AU teams, uh, was on a very successful team, uh, wanted to go to college to do that, and I blew out my ACL, my MCL, and had this really bad experience after the surgery, and my rehab was terrible, and I just started singing because I had nothing else to do, and, you know, watching TV worked for the first few weeks, but, like, I would have this thing that would move my leg up and down, um, trying to keep the range of motion, and I actually distinctly remember asking my father to bring the guitar into me, and um, I, previously, when I would write songs, it was for, like, girls that I had a crush on, and I wanted them to like me, but in this season of life, I I felt extreme desolation and it was actually in this season of life that music truly became a way to um, connect with God. And so I started writing songs and uh, making kind of melodies to the responsorial Psalms. So that was kind of when it actually began for me in high school. I played in a lot of rock bands, um, I think the reason earlier when I said like concerts aren't really my thing, it's not because I don't like going to concerts and I'd probably be, you know, a pretty fun concert to get, you know, I'd probably put, <laughs> I'd be a fun concert uh, to yeah. go to. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I'd put on a good concert. I don't even play music and I'd be a great concert to go to. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. You were literally showing me clips of that. Can I get exactly. right, before the show. right before the show? <laughs> I need more coffee. Um, right. I think we all. I did a I'm No good. Sleep Till Brooklyn okay. cover on stage with this band, the mm. band that actually recorded our Beatitudes intro, mm. and so I was showing it to Nick. That's not an easy song, man. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Anyways, keep going. Yeah. So you know, I I think the reason I'm like hesitant with the whole concert thing is because later in my high school, um, early college experience, um, I was challenged by somebody who I just tremendously respected uh, is actually Paul Balash. He wrote open the eyes of my heart. I was oh, at a yeah. national worship leader conference. He's like this, like kind of staple um, guy who like would never miss uh, Sunday service at his home church and, and like would fly all over the world, but always make it back for Sunday, like really has priorities. Right. And so anyways, I had a chance uh, to talk with him and he looked me in the eye and was like, Hey, look, like I see that you're going to go somewhere. I, I see your gifts. Um, I think, you need to be told and come to understand like this conviction. Um, you you got two roads here. Uh, you can't serve two masters. You can't like promote yourself and do this whole, like, Hey, look at me entertainment thing while also trying to be invisible and lead the people of God into throne room, deeper worship and relationship with Christ. And so that was a really big moment for me. Um, so musically, I was so convicted by his words that I started really discerning, Lord, what do you want me to do with this gift? And in down the road, I ended up choosing, I want to serve the church. And, uh, I used to have these dreams. I've actually never shared this with anybody. Like I, I would have this dream that would reoccur every f- few times a year. And it was like, I'd climb this incredible mountain and I was standing at the top of this mountain, achieving like this incredible thing. And, all of a sudden I'd look to my right and the left and there was nobody yep. with me. Mm. And then it's like, where are you Lord? Um, and he was with me all along. And it was like, I was always like, it, it was, I interpreted the dream as like being the youngest of three boys, always wanting people to see my successes, all this stuff. Like, 
and, and the Lord was allowing me to like be okay with like achieving something and nobody knowing it. Yeah. And he was just there. And it was like That's this cool. profound moment. Um, I've actually never really shared that with anybody. So it's come up a few times and even recently it's come up, you know, with Catholic music initiative and, and, um, all the incredible things that are happening. It's like, like really needing to p- purify my heart and mind with mission. So anyways, well, I want to take a moment here and play a little bit of a song that you, uh, that you arranged, arranged. Thank yeah. you. And, uh, the way it came out is so beautiful. Maybe we can comment about it here as we listen to it towards the end. Totes. We won't listen to the whole thing, but, um, I think you did such an incredible job on this, my friend. Mm. Now, I know that we end up having the trumpets come in at one point, and that's when this song goes to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. God. yeah. I would encourage everybody to go on whatever their favorite listening device is, purchase Catholic Music Initiative's albums, but check out Oh God Beyond All Praising. I'm going to leave you on the hook for that trumpet because that is something else. Yeah. God. Yeah. Tell me about arranging music that exists, bringing it kind of that, you've said it to me before, the ever ancient is ever new. Like, mm. Tell me about this process you go through. First and foremost, like when it comes to things of scripture, like I think there's a really um, intimidating factor at play that it's like, this is the word of God. And I'm trying to create something that would bear the weight um, of the text of God's word. Um, And I think that that's something that um, just is really intimidating uh, when it comes to hymns like "Oh God Beyond All Praising," it's really interesting. Uh, it, it's it's already beautiful. Yeah, the words are incredible. Um, my favorite part of it is um, in whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill, with triumph or our sorrows, and rise to bless you still. So that always hits me like for the first time, um, even though I've heard it tons of times and sung it tons of times, but. But I think the idea is to add a cadence and a nuance that would maybe like reach people in a different way. And when we started arranging th- to that hymn, it was it was really interesting. Like the world um, just felt like it was imploding, you know, and like there was so much division and the media was kind of knocking at the door through social media. Everything you watch, it's all just just really overbearing and stressful. And then there's like this hymn that brings people joy and draws them into the heart of God. And I don't want to completely change it. Um, I actually just want to make it accessible for people today so that they receive it almost in a new way. Mm -hmm. And so um, you'll notice like um, if, if you look at like kind of like the Mormon tabernacle choir version or some of the other versions out there, it stays in this kind of major tone. Um, I went to the minor. So it's like um, constantly going back to the minor, which adds this kind of tension and darkness to the arrangement, makes it feel more sincere. And, uh, and so, yeah, um, that was kind of the concept behind it was how do we take this hymn and we like, I mean, just add a sincerity to it so people can really marinate on the depth of it. I think in this world of musical liturgy and and you have all these musical directors at churches everywhere across America, mm. they're just, in my mind, often throwing things together, scrapping for resources, don't have much to help them along or to aid them. And then you just explained something to me about that arrangement that I've never heard before mm. in a way that I can connect to without being musically intelligent. Yep. And also I... I promise you the rest of the day I'm singing that song because you made it accessible. You didn't make it out of a range or a way that I can't do it. But if I was, Mm. 
like your wife, professionally trained opera, then she can take it to some other level because that arrangement speaks to both groups. Right. Uh, I hope people that are listening to this know this, that Catholic Music Initiative resources are available to parishes, to campus ministries, um, to various events on their website, catholicmusicinitiative.org. Dot org. Yeah. And um, the mass settings are on there. Almost done with mm-hmm. a couple of years, going to round out all three years and all the, the psalms to go with it. Prayerful, accessible, reverent music that can be for the the musician coming out of college that this is what they want to give to the Lord yeah. or for Jeff and his family that just want to sing loud because we love Jesus. Yeah. Well, and I, I love what you said in there about it's already the word of God. So it's just how do we make it accessible? And that's, that's very much John's gospel that the word became flesh. Mm-hmm and dwelt amongst us. So what, what does that look like and how is he becoming incarnate today? And so you're taking your gifts that you already had with your backstory of, of learning music, even if it was in, in a difficult circumstance or a difficult season of your life that, that you learned all of that. And then you were, you know, told that you could go one road or the other and you, and you took that and, and gave it as an option for the Lord to become incarnate through. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Dave, you know uh, that the Beatitudes are known to be religiously funny, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the most authentic wow. reaction. They're really well yeah. known. Hey, I just want to really quickly let you know my right leg is going to just stop moving this way. <laughs> I'm just going to let it go. Okay. You're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. No, yeah. I just want to. We are going to add that. We're brothers. That. We're, We're going to add a leg camera brothers. so that people can rock, see what's happening. Rock. Give it to them. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't see you there. <laughs> hey, he already gave you a knee bump. Why do you need a yeah, fist bump? Yeah. Bam. Hey. All right, we're going to play that... a game, Dave. Oh, okay. You ready? Let's All right. play a game. Yeah. So this game, Paul's going to pull it out for us, yep. is called the No Name Improv Game. And if you have a better name, you let us know. We'd be happy to listen. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're the judge of this one. In our bonus show, you're actually a participant. Paul's going to pull out... Uh, we don't have to show off what it is. We'll just go for it, we, right? Yeah, we can go for it. So yeah. mm. we're going to pull out a character... Yes, a character card and then a question that's being posed to that character. So we have to respond as that character <clears throat> how okay. they would answer that question. Once he says uh-huh. all of it, we'll have 10 seconds on the clock to consider and go. Mm-hmm. As a 1920s gangster, what are you handy to have around the house for? Anybody hungry out there? I got a knuckle sandwich waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> commitment. <laughs> Stupid commitment. Hey, uh, anybody need me to shoot the lights out? I got my Tommy gun right here. That's pretty good. That was solid. Oh, shoot the lights out. <laughs> so handy to have that around the house. I had a, a similar <laughs> approach. That's why you got to speak up. Fast. I know. I got to go second. I could have. I could have. Spot. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do a variant on that. Here we go. Hey, uh, my boy Tommy, you uh, you want me to clean your gun for you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> give me a Tommy gun. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I think you, when you're doing that quiz game and you get points for going faster, uh-huh. that's what mm-hmm. happened to you. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Dave, you actually have to pick a winner. Nick. Please let us... Nick. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Without hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, don't you don't shouldn't apologize. Have, yeah, don't apologize at all, brother. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I just I yeah. come on. I'll just cry in my car. It's yeah. fine. I, I thought yours was really great. It got me <laughs> laughing. No, Nick, you don't have to give me a the Tommy gun. The thing is that you, you rolled off the Tommy gun. Your accent was great. I just did I not get it, full credit for going very fast? I think it was too fast. Oh. I'm going to give you a little bit of yeah, feedback that's fair. there. And hey, it still sounded Australian. No, Returnal, Dave. Okay. Returnal direction. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me tell you something. For one. being our celebrity judge, you're getting a pair of sock religious socks. I love sock we're, religious. We're giving you... The Sacred Heart of Jesus. Oh, that's great. Thank Brother, you. congratulations. Thank you. Do you already have this pair? No. All right. Well, that's a great one. I Today, I am too. wearing St. Augustine. Oh, wow. You, that looked really Yeah, natural. are you okay? <laughs> you need to do that more. Yeah. It's been yeah. a while since I practice, uh, practice that. did the old high kick. You need to um, maybe do the Roman version of you know Pilates, Pontius Pilates. Pontius Pilates. <laughs> what is that stretch bands? What? What? Hey, Dave. <laughs> stretch bands. <laughs> So you want to hear something cool? Everybody listening, the Beatitudes, which is, you know, the the universe of Beatitudes can actually get 10% off their first purchase of mm. Sock Religious Socks by going to SockReligious.com slash Beatitudes. Yes. There is probably not a slash 
Beatitudes because Ooh. I don't think they have that one. That'll get you to the 404. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Nick from the Beatitudes. Check this out. If you're a business owner or marketer targeting Christians in your community, Decided Excellence Magazine can help you reach that goal. Decided Excellence publishes monthly magazines to thousands of homeowners in your area. So whether you're a home services business owner, a Catholic school trying to grow your enrollment, whatever it might be, Decided Excellence can help you find your next customer. Visit decidedexcellence.com today and start growing together. Hey y'all, this is Jeff Schaffelbein. When Nick and I set out to start our new company, Undivided Life, we were really concerned about how would we cover the healthcare needs of our growing families And we were so excited to find a company that fit both our medical needs and our faith beliefs perfectly. It's called Solidarity HealthShare. It is an ethical alternative to traditional health insurance. We're never part of sharing in the medical costs of anything that goes against the teachings of the Catholic Church, making it a great alternative for Catholics and Christians alike. Solidarity is very affordable, which is perfect for a large family or for a new and growing business like the one we've started. So visit joinsolidarity.com today so that you can get started with us. Welcome back, everybody. Hi, Nick. What's up? (laughs) All right. (laughs) Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Dave Moore. I'm here. We're having a blast, aren't we? We're having like a 1920s throwback all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Beatitudes. Yeah, the Beatitudes have been around... For a long time, yeah, for years. Beatitudes mount up. Blossom the Beatitudes blossomed since 1978. I Not do even believe. worried about that. Okay, so we're gonna go right in Beatitudes to a game we call TBD. This is TBD to do, to be determined what we're talking about, but also mm. TBD the Beatitudes. Mm. Now this doesn't look like a deck of cards. <laughs> what is that? But eventually it will be. <laughs> Okay, we got question number 27. Question number 27 turns out to be a faith-filled question. Okay, so this one's for everybody, including you, my friend. Number 27. If someone told you, I don't believe in God, how would you answer? Ooh, I... Oh. (laughs) I would would just tell them the Beatitudes. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Go ahead, Paul. No, actually, it's interesting because I've had this conversation with somebody before, and um, this was, gosh, this was a while ago now, though, but... um, we were just all hanging out. We were, uh, I, th- I want to say it was like country western dancing or something, but you know, you find yourself in these conversations in between, you know, when you're, when you're just hanging out at the table and all that. And somebody said something like, oh, well, so, you know, you were in seminary and all that. I'm not, I'm not sure I believe in God. And I said, well, have you ever, have you ever been to Australia? And she was like, well, no. Hmm. I was like, well, do you believe that it exists? She's like, well, yeah. I was like, why? Yeah, why? And she said, well, I know people who have been there, I've like seen pictures and all that. And I was like, but how do you know the pictures are from there if you haven't been there? And you know, you can, and I know it was a little bit of a troll, sure, move, no, but it, it was just kind of like, it got her thinking apparently. And, and years later she told me that, um, she was like, yeah, uh, that helped a lot because <laughs> she hadn't considered the fact that there cool. are a lot of things that she hasn't encountered, but that she's still just accepts as, as being yeah. real and true. I just had one of these two weeks ago and you'll know where it came from when I tell you kind of the, the crux of it. It wasn't, uh, I don't think God exists, but it was, well, no, it absolutely was that, that God probably doesn't exist because of all this like superhuman life forms from, you know, millions of years ago, all this kind of stuff about ancient civilizations, all very fascinating stuff. And I said, what about Jesus? I said, who's that? And this guy said, uh, the most moral human to ever walk the earth. I said, the most moral human to ever walk the earth. I said, can I challenge you on that? I said, do you think he's like Christ? Do you think he's God three in one? He said, no, 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 no. Just the most moral human. I go, it's not possible. <laughs> I said, if he's not God, if he's not the son of God, and you know where this comes from, right? Yeah. C.S. Lewis, he's an incredible liar or he is insane but you can't be either of those and be the most moral human to ever walk the earth. Yeah. You or, might just be an okay party guest. <laughs> yeah. Lord liar or lunatic. Exactly. Is, yeah. 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 That's great. G- growing up, my, my brother was finishing his uh, uh, PhD in medieval philosophy. And it was always like, Hey, why don't you uh, go, go 
get this job over here or do this. And he'd always be like, why? (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) And I, you know, all, all fun and games aside, like for me, when I'm faced with people who ask that question, like no rational argument that I bring to the table has ever like completely won. It's, it's simply like asking them questions Mm -hmm. and allowing them to kind of unfold the why. And, um, and I think it's, it's super interesting. Like ultimately like leading someone to an experience, um, with God, like ultimately, um, you know, that, that, at least in my humble experiences has been like the, the thing, uh, I had, um, a sound engineer who didn't believe in God for years. And I would always have him run sound during Eucharistic adoration in every six hour drive we had, I'd ask him questions and let him answer the why. Yep. And then all of a sudden one day, uh, he goes up to Dr. John Bergsma from Franciscan mm-hmm. university. And he's like, I need answers. Like I experienced this what am I experiencing? Yes. <laughs> and then like a year later, I'm his sponsor, you know? And it's like, Amazing. that's awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's just kind of like asking the why and then allowing them to encounter the living God. The cool part of that too, is like this whole thing that you can't be the answer. You can only be the hands and feet of Christ. So live, yeah. live a life yeah. that God can work through you, Yeah, but it's not your timing. It's not your way. It's right. You're just an instrument. In that. Yeah. That's well said. That's well said. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for, for me, as I reflect on, on that question, where, where I want to go is like, well, think through your life and the things that have happened. If, if that's your worldview and okay, sure. You can just go with the, it's all chance and formed by luck and predestination or whatever you want to call it. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you actually dig a little bit deeper and peel back the onion, you'll see these things that just, make sense in a way that line up that there's no other explanation. It it just, that's my experience. I would challenge others to really think about it. If, if that was their worldview Mm. to just like, Hey, take a minute. Yeah. Dig a little deeper and ask a few more questions. I think this, go ahead. I smell Nick stepping in (laughs) (laughs) this ancient, uh, I should clean the floors. (laughs) This ancient civilization argument was so funny because everybody was kind of listening and um, the comment was like, Jeff, what's the scriptural like explanation of ancient civilizations? And I said, I have no idea, but none of this changes anything about my faith. Like, (laughs) like, cool. I mean, we know a lot about one particular ancient civilization, right? I mean, the Israelites and and going way back. And so we're, we're zeroed in on that story because of how the Lord worked in them to be a priestly people, meaning a a place of encounter with him. And so he was sort of their sacrament in the world at that time. So there's a lot that we don't know about. Yeah. We didn't write a Bible that says, here's every human that ever walked the earth. Right. Here's a catalog (laughs) of every single thing. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's, these are the important moments that we need to know in order to come into contact with God. Now there are a lot of fascinating other stories out there. I'm not trying to discount sure. some of those things. I mean, it's, and it's all worth exploring. I mean, we, it, it's not as though we're against, you know, these other, these other histories or, or the, the conclusions of science or things like that. All of that grows out of uh, an inquiry of faith. In fact, so I find it harder for me to talk to somebody who doesn't think that there's a God at all, because I'm, I sometimes don't even know like where to start with that. It's when they start talking about like, is Christianity is, real is jesus real or then is like what is catholicism like that stuff i enjoy talking about and regardless of where somebody's coming from i find it to be a really great conversation like the no god one i'm always like eh, i don't really know what to tell you like that seems so foreign to me that somebody Mm -hmm. feels that way and um i'm not gonna act like i've read all these things yet but i've started reading some church fathers and uh saint basil it is phenomenal to hear in the 300s, what he's saying. So then I went back and read Justin Martyr. Mm. Justin Martyr's letter says, stop bothering us just because we believe that the true presence of Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity is in this Eucharistic moment is none of your business, Roman emperors. Like, it's so like black and white from a guy who hung out with guys who hung out with Jesus. You know, it's not a philosopher sitting around in their whatever basement coming up with a new idea. This is, these are the guys, the, the original Beatitudes. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course you had to make it a tie back to yeah i love it You're, i love it it's for you paul no thank you thank you <laughs> i'm gonna smile in my heart the rest of the day i was just marinating on everything that y'all were talking about in uh, a long time ago uh, uh a really close friend who was a spiritual father uh, who kind of gave me wisdom. He, he reminded me that a theologian is one who prays and one who prays is a theologian. And I've come to this realization wow. that as we run across or uh, encounter people who have been completely consumed and taken by that of the world and the ideologies of the world, simply challenging that they encounter or just exercise that of prayer can sometimes be our bringing of the five loaves and two fish. And, mm -hmm. and then we trust that God brings forth the multiplication and the miracle. I think that that is something that uh, uh, it, it's so beyond us. Like this whole question, it's um, blessed are those who have seen and have eyes and hearts and ears you know, to see and hear. Um, but I, I'm super, this is, this is a topic that's heavy on my heart because when I look at the world today, I don't see a lot of virtue. And part of that is because I'm seeing a lot of the world through social media or through mm. the news or whatever. Right. But I'm constantly reminded that in order to obtain virtue, balance, holiness, right? Like, like, um, holiness is preceded by habitation. So, Ultimately, if we are seeking the presence of God where he resides, it is in doing so that we therefore are able to dwell on his thoughts in his ways and allow him to transform us to become holy. Yeah. And so the question of people who don't believe or a world that is turned away from virtue, goodness, this, that, and the other, it's like, okay, let's, let's bring the presence of God to them, which is really cool because in 2024, there's four Eucharistic processions. Mm. Chris crossing the four <laughs> corners of the U S to come together in Indianapolis. That's right. Yeah. Wow. I want to talk about that in one second, but I actually remember what I was going to say awesome. when you were talking about a theologian a prayer is mm. someone who prays and somebody mm. prays as a theologian. Yeah. The two things that I always love is somebody says, Hey, what can I do for you besides praying? And I'm like, pray more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and actually pray for me. Like, don't just say you're going to. That's that's not the game. Actually, Praying yeah. for me. And then I can remember uh, seeing a politician. It's time to stop praying and start acting. And I was like, no, it is not time to stop praying. And I think that when we realize yeah. how powerful that is, um, that's a place that you can have encounter. And that, that virtuous um, morality of America, I know it's shot. But at the same time, there's no good out outlet for the virtuous to broadcast how virtuous they are. So every time that we say that, like, oh, you'll never find good people in fill in the blank, New York, this college, this yeah. organization, they're everywhere. But then what's your actual experience with people, yeah. right? Yeah. You trust people. They're good people everywhere. Oh. Like, yeah. It's not what's the news because that's not the majority. Prayerful that's people. making news. Yes. Right. right? Yeah. People of great prayer all around us are not the loudest people on social media. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm fasting and I'm praying. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe you sometimes <laughs> I got to tell you, like I do, I'll write about my prayer life sometimes on LinkedIn and I can watch the algorithm demote those posts because oh. I can get 10,000 posts on something. I can get 5,000 posts and I can get 500 impressions is the word. impressions. Sorry, mm. whatever it is. <laughs> um, and what's wild is I can see the difference. And so like I posted something from the vocation of the business leader, but I left out the part where it says the word God, like I didn't take out God. I just cut out a part before and after some talk of God. Yeah. I guarantee that does better mm. than if I were to talk about prayer. I mean, your iPhone won't even autocorrect if you write God wrong. It'll put Hod. That's not an accident. No. Yeah. That's yeah. a complete well, in sham. Well, social media, if you're wanting to target, like, you know, specific demographics or whatever, they have taken off the Christian demographic on Instagram, on Facebook. Wow. You cannot find. I did not. Do you know, I'm going to tell you a, so, a story about soccer religious. So I have all the filters on my phone so that no kid accidentally presses something and ends up on, you know, they don't right. have my phone, but I don't want that to happen on accident. Yeah. Right. I can't go to, at least back then I couldn't go to soccerreligious.com because I had uh, all adult content restricted. Mm. And so, you know, there's just some punk kid who's like, well, that's a Catholic, yeah. you know, Christian organization. Let me make that one considered explicit in that one. Oh, and unless man. you catch it, you know, you have somebody like me that can call soccer religious and say, yeah. guess what's happening? Well, where does he go? 
chat room? No, he has to like send an email and hope for the best. Like you're getting throttled by Google. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Hey, the National Eucharistic Congress and yeah. the revival, the three-year revival leading up to the Congress that really is a revival for the rest of our lives is to bring people's uh, hearts and minds back to the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. The USCCB made this possible through the bishops of America. Mm. And Dave Moore, we can say this out loud, right? Yeah, yeah. Officially, your title with the National Eucharistic Congress is? Director of Music and Liturgy. And you're yeah. here with us. Woo! Hey! Brother! Yeah. 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 Man, is that the entourage that... F- you came in here with? Is that who that was? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what does this mean? What I, is this? I think uh, th- it means, honestly, it means that I've got a lot of work to do yeah. and a lot of prayers to pray. Um, this is uh, so much bigger than any of us. And it's incredible that, you know, we get to play a small role in, I don't know, just being a vessel for the Lord to meet and empower his people. And, in this very special way. Yeah. And and when I think of the the Congress, which will be in July of 2024, the idea that it really is going to be the biggest family reunion of the Catholic Church in our lifetime. <laughs> I love that. You know? I love that. It, it really is. It's, it's epic, you know? I mean, there's so many things I'd love to say uh, of people that are going to be there and I mean, there's going to be so much. Um, I, I'll let that be announced by the Congress. But um, what I can tell you is that as far as, you know, I know with the liturgies, like to see all the priests and the bishops and to have a full orchestra, you know, in the mass uh, at Lucas Oil Stadium. And we've got the Pacers Arena down the street and there's all this stuff happening and the kids are going to have a great time and families are going to travel. And uh, it, it really is truly going to be this hospitable congregation of of people that are longing to grow in faith and virtue and, and to put the Lord as the center of their life. And I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities for people who also aren't really strong in faith and uh, who have probably been on the fence for years to be yep. able to be drawn in and to find that joy and peace, which is beyond all understanding that only comes from Jesus Christ because the Lord in every sense of the matter is being put first. Um, How many times have you seen this? Like you'll see the pictures of uh, Eucharistic procession going down, you know, fifth Avenue in New York city or somewhere else. And people who have left the faith or, or maybe are lukewarm Mm. drop to their knees and in reverence pray. And that's where I think about this this moment of highlighting the Eucharist for this several years in the diocese, then in the parishes, and then in the revival at the actual Congress itself. You're just giving people this moment of a chance for an encounter. Yeah. And uh, I'm so uh, grateful that you said yes, that you are bringing your talents to this. You've always positioned yourself, uh, what I watch, not what you say, you're an incredibly gifted, talented musician who acts like an altar server. And I think that's such a beautiful witness that you give to all of us in that. So congratulations on the post. Thank you. I will say this, the team that is working on this, yeah. um, the executive director, Tim, um, w- when we first talked, I, I was really trying to get to know this guy more. Um, and he's like a warrior for the faith. Yes. Like he doesn't let things get him down. Mm. And um, he was actually in Dallas recently and, you know, I, I mean, just probably got plagued by Dallas allergies or whatever, but like he'll never let you see it because he's so keeping his eye on the goal and getting to work alongside some of these people. Yeah. I mean, it's really increased my faith in a lot of ways. So I'm pretty stoked to see so what cool. the next year looks so like. Cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, guys. And wow. it's going to be a week long. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. a week in Indianapolis. So that's going to be yeah. family vacation 2024. There you go. So I'm actually leaving here and I'm going to write about, um, I mean, over the next few weeks, I'm going to finish about another 200 pages of orchestral music for the <laughs> mass of peace. Wow. Right. And so. Um, do you need some help? Yeah, I do. I mean, we can't. Yeah. yeah just like, asking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you need some? Do, do you need it? I do need help. I'm just curious. <laughs> I actually looked up. I was like, Paul, you're going to help me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey. But, I could try. I play that yeah. trombone. <laughs> any any beatitudes out there? Yeah. yeah. We're going to be doing some broadcasts from the Congress, too. Yeah. Uh, 
We'll, yeah. have, a, we'll have a mobile broadcast. I actually bought my tickets already for my entire family, bringing the babies and everything. Maybe That's a, awesome. Yeah. We're going to make a Wait, big for deal. real? Yeah. I am for real. That is legit. Oh, yeah. We're going for the whole week. That you want to come? That's legit. Yeah. We could use a babysitter. <laughs> 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 Set up. <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs> wait a second. No, you are going because we actually, there's going to be a lot of our guests there that we're going to be just knocking out shows. So Sweet. it's going to be fun. Um, hey, we do something on the show that's a little unique. Yeah. Um, do you know what the reverse Simpsons are? <laughs> Wait, is that like when you don't have a tissue, so you close one and then just let it go? Wow. <laughs> I think that's called something else, but I'm glad to hear that's where you went with this. Ah, so this farmer's is Farmer's Blow. That's farmer's Blow. <laughs> reverse Simpsons. Okay. I, I got Nick. <laughs> I, call, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to follow that. I think so, I call it the, I, like the runners, something. Wait, like who's our demographic for this? <laughs> don't worry about it. They're fine. It's all blown. Yeah. So the reverse okay, Simpsons great. is that every Simpsons episode is different at the beginning. Mm. The Attitudes closes every show differently, and we would like for you to, um, as we play this little uh, baseline jingle, we're going to do a competition today. It's the the cream cookie challenge. The so what happens here? Because I saw this on <clears> TV, <throat> is we're going to put these on our foreheads. And we're going to... Actually, Dave, why don't you participate? <laughs> he's just <laughs> going it's, for it. You can, you can eat one, but we put it on our forehead. And you're, it's who can first get it into their mouth. What, what would be good is for somebody to continue to try to speak during this, too. So Maybe we'll keep Dave the show can, going. Dave can narrate for those. All uh, right, hold on. You, the show hasn't started. I don't know how you're going to do that. with the, You're cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> you can't... Glasses, come on. Used his glasses. All right, to, since to you already got it done, the competition down. clock is 60 seconds. Wait for the baseline. And if you drop it, you can just grab another one, okay? Okay. Get yours. Okay, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Paul, yep. stop calibrating. Okay, hold on. Let me stop get on this. Calibrate, calibrate and listen. <laughs> All right. Where are we going? In your mouth. You got to catch it. Oh! Okay, that's one. Oh, so close! Ah, that's two. Yeah. First down, move the chains for Nick. Ah! I got it. I think I won. No. Oh, I was so close on the first No, I one. did a chewing noise and you said I won. I was chewing I before you, when you said that. Hey, mom, Wait. I'm on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Dave. Dave. Who are you? You can plug her in if Not you want. America. Do you want to plug her in? All right. <laughs> oh yeah! All right, I need that. fifty points for Nick, fifty points for Jeff. We'll split it. Yeah. Great job! Well hey, stick around for the bonus show. These this are was great. such they are really good. This was such a great show with you, Dave. We'll see you in the bonus show, and it may be a while before we're all back together again, but we will see you in the Eucharist. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.